In part four, we want to have a look at another modeling technique, which is called subdivision surface modeling, or also sub D modeling. And it's rather an addition to the polygon modeling technique we've um, discovered in the earlier sessions. So um, it kind of, kind of builds on the basic approach of polygon modeling, but adds uh, another set of functionality to the approach of polygon modeling. And it, it allows you to do So in part four of the in part four of this series, we want to have a closer look at a modeling technique which is called subdivision surface modeling or also sub D modeling. And that's not only for Cinema 4D, but you will find similar techniques also in different 3D modeling applications. So subdivision surface modeling is kind of an addition to the classic polygon modeling approach, but it adds a little bit of special features to it so that we can create even more detailed, realistic looking objects. In part four of this series, we want to have a closer look at something which is called subdivision surface modeling or also sub D modeling. And this is basically in addition to the default classic polygon modeling we learned in an earlier session. Subdivision surface modeling allows you to make even more detailed, highly realistic looking objects. The Functionality of subdivision surface modeling is really simple to understand, but not quite easy to to really master and to to use in everyday life. Like learning to draw or learning to play an instrument, you have to keep practicing it. Um, so there are some pitfalls and some learning curves involved into getting into subdivision surface modeling. So this is also why in this series we will only cover the basics of subdivision surface modeling so that you know what it is and how to to use it but really to get into it and into the the depths of modeling you have to kind of uh, go a little bit further than what this fundamental series um, will provide so let's have a look at the sub d modeling and what it actually does so first let's get a, a basic understanding of the technique so subdivision surface modeling is a technique for making high resolution models while manipulating a low resolution model so we use a generator to transform this low polygon control mesh to a high polygon um, final kind of mesh and the result is that um, this subdivision surface mesh has much more subdivisions. That's why the name is subdivision surface uh, modeling. It has much more surfaces, much more polygons, and by thus it has a smoother appearance than our control mesh. We want to keep or work with the control mesh because the control mesh is low poly and by this it's easier to control and it's easier to model with. But we can then use the generator to make our simplified control mesh into a nice looking subdivided high poly object. So this is what the setup basically looks like. We have our subdivision surface object. In it is a polygon object, it can also be a parametric object, but in most cases it should be a polygon object. And then this would be or could be a result you get from the object. So to put that into um, into perspective and what we can do with this, um, let's simply try out what the subdivision surface object does for us. So I have a simple cube here. It has only one segment on each side. And if I drop this cube into the subdivision surface object, you can see that it kind of makes a sphere out of our cube. So why is that? Basically, the subdivision uh, surface object will 
interpolate between different surfaces and will introduce a kind of smoothing and rounding to our object. And if we activate the lines here to see how many segments we have on our object, you can see that our cube, which is now looking like a sphere, has actually more segments, more polygons um, added to it. If I deactivate the subdivision surface object and you can use the Q button for that, we can go back to our control mesh. So this is what our control mesh is, our cube. Um, you can see we have in our control mesh only like one segment on each side. And as soon as I activate the subdivision surface object, you see we get like a four by four crit on each side. And that is because we have set the subdivision surface um, settings or properties to subdivide each side or each segment of our object by two. This will result in a two by two kind of grid. So if I would increase this to three, um, you, you can see that the amount will double another time and we get a much cleaner surface on here. We have two settings here, we have viewport and renderer. So we can define how high we want the detail to be. Um, on one part on the, in the viewport and on the other part in the renderer. So we can keep that low in our viewport and crank that up a little bit in our rendering so that we get a nicer or even more smooth appearance of our object. And as you can see um, how the smoothness will increase if I turn that um, up. So um, what we can do, let's transform this control mesh into an editable polygon object. And now the Q shortcut on your keyboard is really useful in that kind of scenario. And what we could do now is in the control mesh, we could actually um, change the control mesh. And for example, let's say we want to do an inset here and then an extrusion to the outset, just to show you what kind of uh, happens with this kind of object. And as you can see, the appearance of the object changes, but it's still very, very round. And what we have to do to get rid of this kind of rounding effect is we have to introduce new cuts to our control mesh. So as soon as I load up in the surface mode, one of our modeling tools, in this case, the loop cut, you can see then if I add a loop cut, for example, around this kind of edge here on the front, uh, and I continue to do this also on the other edges, you can see suddenly we kind of get an edge sharpening in here and can kind of get a control over how sharp the edges of our objects should be. Now to understand this kind of behavior of our subdivision surface object, we have to understand what is called a B-spline. And first of all, what we have here is a normal spline and it's um, a Bezier curve. So if I click on one of the control points, you see we get this tangent here on the on the corner. And with this tangent, we can control the flow of the spline. You know that already from the spline sessions. And also if you work with Photoshop Illustrator or Figma, you kind of know the behavior of those Bezier curves. But there's actually another type of curve and that's called the B-spline. The B-spline has doesn't has, have the control points on the spline itself, but the control points can actually leave the spline. And the curvature is defined by the distance of one control point to another. To illustrate, let's move this control point closer to the point over here and this one closer to the point here on the corner. And as you can see, by moving the control points closer to each other, we kind of get this kind of nice rounded shape. If I move it back again, you can see we kind of can get a really large radius here in our corner. And this basic method is all what the subdivision surface object does. It kind of interpolates between different points and creates this kind of rounding. And because we had so little control points on our cube in the beginning, the cube actually appeared as a sphere. So if I uh, get rid of those control points here completely, you can see we kind of get this more or less perfect rounded shape and we only have this one control point over here. So this is the behavior you have to understand 
for making a subdivision surface object. And I also have a slide here if you want to read up on that again. So actually the kind of object we create with the subdivision surface generator is a so-called NURBS object and it stands for non-uniform rational B-spline. Now you don't have to understand the NURBS object or what all those kind of fancy words stands for. But if you want to understand it, you can read up this short paragraph. And um, yeah, what you can also do, which is, might be important here to mention is that that's what the rational stands for, is you, we can actually add another information to our points or to our edges, which will define the curvature of our shape even more. And to do this, um, let me show you another example. We have this kind of freeform object over here. Um, so that's very, low resolution, only a few segments over here. So let me drop that into a subdivision surface object. And as you can see now, also if I deactivate the lines, you can see it's smoothened out quite nicely. Now, one use case for the subdivision surface object or which makes it very powerful is we can, by uh, adding new cuts to the surface, define the radius of each kind of corner uh, or each kind of edge on our object. So let's say we want to have a hard cut edge here on the on the top part and maybe also a harder one here on the lower part, but the other part here in the middle, let me introduce the lines here again. So on this middle part, we want to keep a nice smoothed out curvature. So what I do now is I will use the bevel tool in our in edge mode and I set it to solid. That was one click too much. I, added, uh, I selected solid here in the bevel tool. And now if you double click one of the edges, you can click and drag, and then we will kind of copy our edges in two directions and kind of create the same thing we did with the cuts on the cube uh, or with adding the, the points on our B spline at detail to our curvature. So let me do the same thing here, but this time our edges will be very close to each other and we keep the one in the middle here as is. Now if I activate our subdivision surface object again you can see that we now have a very pronounced edge over here. We have a bit more of a corner over here but the rest is still nice and smooth. So this is really the advantage of the subdivision surface object that you can kind, kind of create different curvatures and different uh, appearances of uh, corners or edges on your object and really define the flow of the object. Also notice that we have this cut here in the middle. That's this one. So this is will kind of get us the kind of curvature here because this part is lower than this part and this part in the middle is somewhere in between. We kind of get this uh, nice rounding on this kind of plane here. So, but what I actually wanted to show you is we can use another technique, technique which is called weighting when we use subdivision surface objects. And to do that, you have to hold the period point on your keyboard and then click and drag your mouse. And then you will get this subdivision surface weight on your object. And while holding the period key and you drag and drop your mouse to the left or to the right, you can see the, this corner gets red if I move the mouse to the right. And this means this kind of corner now has the ma maximum weight to it. And it will appear even sharper. And as you can see now, when I move it completely to the right, it's like a super hard corner. So let me select that again, use the period key to soften that out a little bit. But as you can see, we kind of can control the edge um, hardness here even further with this kind of setup. Um, might be a better example to show it over here because the edges on the lower part, they were very close to each other. So as you can see, I can fine tune the, the angle of my corner cut here a little bit further. Might also be useful to kind of increase your subdivisions here to get the kind of result you want. 
So um, yeah, this is just like another uh, detail of the subdivision surface object, but you don't necessarily have to use the weighting. You can uh, get really, really far also with the other useful um, way of adding details to your object by using line cuts uh, on your 3D object.